Dear students, and uh, this week, uh, last class, we are going to look into the SPS TBT agreement vis a vis the Indian provisions, Indian regulations, and also the, the Food Safety Standards Act and uh, other uh, regulations with regard to uh, uh, you know the food uh, as well as uh, uh, you know SPS part as well as the TBT part, and also especially uh, the Food Safety Standard Authority. Also, we are going to see that what are their regulations, licensing requirements, certification requirements, etc. So, in order to uh, you know understand the background of uh, you know within the background of SPS and TBT agreements, and uh, we have to look into these uh, particular laws with regard to India. And we, we is again uh, we are looking into the objective of TBT, it is very clear. So, TBT agreement very clearly talks about technical standards and assessment procedures and it talks about non-discrimination, non-discrimination between domestic actions and imported products. So, we saw the example the, the US, the, the clove cigarettes case from Indonesia and also standards. So, like the SPS, TBT agreement also says that they strongly encourages the members to adopt international standards and especially the codex standards which was prescribed under the SPS agreement and other standards. And the basic commitments which you can see that there is no uniform standard prescribed by TBT. Every country have the freedom to adopt a standard which is suitable to them, but subject to the regulations, subject to certain basic principles, cardinal principles of non-discrimination, again you cannot put, you cannot set the standard arbitrarily in place of protectionism and that standard cannot act as a barrier to trade. And also other reasons, the members can take action for protecting the environment national security and consumer information. So, they can have their own provisions, but again only the condition is that these provisions should not be used as a protectionist measure to stop trade. So, then again the question is how these standards are set at the domestic level. So, each and every member country is free to adopt a particular standard and also you can see that it can be mandatory standards, it can be voluntary standards. It is applicable to industrial products and it is applicable to agriculture products and it is applicable to maybe including any, any product which is going to the consumers even health products, voluntary veterinary products or milk or uh, any, any, any other product which can be the government can come out with uh, special regulations. Moreover, and the countries can come out with good practices which leads to standard development and also the countries can come out with regulations to prevent deceptive practices. For example, India there is a law, some magic remedies act, prevention of magic remedies act which prevents or, or somebody is coming out with a advertisement, a magic remedy for a particular disease. And mostly the DBT agreement looking into the technical regulations and the central government, it is the obligation of the central government to implement at the constituent states. So, we talked about the deceptive practices and this part is taken care by the labeling requirements. The labeling requirements which requires or packaging requirements which requires 
the prescription of the size, its weight and also the nutritional claims etcetera, etcetera. So, the DBT agreement can you know handle the you know the deceptive practices, the prevention of deceptive practices as well and there can be provisions at the domestic law as well. So, here the TPT deals with technical regulations as well as the standard. So, if you come to the standard, it is voluntary measures and also you can see the technical regulations, the mandatory measures. So, and conformity assessment procedure. These are the only points deal with TBT. So, outside this purview, so we saw in the last class about distinction between the SPS measure and TBT measure. So, these are the broad bodies of TBT implementation. Quickly then I think this class we will uh, spend on the Indian uh, laws, regulations and other procedures, how they are implemented the SPS and TBT agreement. And you can see that there is a series of and we will come back to these uh, particular regulations later. So, the first act which we can see that in some of the you know the, 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 the food standards act of 2006, but much before that there are other legislations which you can find the standards of weight and measures act 1976, the standards of weights and measures rules as well and which is amended from time to time which exactly require the manufacturers, packers mandatory declaration certain basic information in the packages of commodities. So, it, it includes the, the quantity, quality, content, expiry date. So, we will see that what exactly it is mean by. And also this is not only the manufacturers in India, the importers also to provide basic declarations and also the indigenous packages. So, weight and measures we can see definitely it is you know even though it is the, the TBT measures come in 1995, we have implemented these measures from 1976 itself probably under the Tokyo round of codes. And again if you look into the international standards, we can find a lot of international standard setting bodies. So, international standardization organization ISO is very popular among all, almost every countries, the International Electrotechnical Commission, the International Telecommunication Union, one of the oldest international organizations, they make international standards. And here the International Standardization Organization ISO, they have more than 9600 international standards, which covering all international fields. So, we will come to the, the, the Indian you know again uh, the international standards, what is the international standard? There are many cases very clearly said that is the sudden case which we have already looked into, they clearly talks about what you exactly mean by the TBT measure. So, we will come to uh, the, the, the one by one, one legislation by the another. So, I said that the present the food law, mainly the food law is dealing with the Food Standards Act of 2006, repealed the, the, the Food Alteration Act of 1956. Now, this under NDR the food protection of food or the standards of food in India is under this act and also an authority has been formed, the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. The has been formulated under this particular act which regulates packaging of all food products. And also you can see special food safety and standards packaging and labeling regulations 2011 and you know from time to time it is uh, amended, it is 2016, 18 or 2023. So, the food can be put what is the standard of the package and what should be the con what kind of contents can be put in packages and also the regulations are also made under this particular act. If you look into this particular organization food safety and standard authority of India, this is 
formed this authority is formed under the act of 2006 which handles food related issues under the various departments this is the single authority which is created to deal with entire food safety of the country and let's see we can see, we can find that this authority the food safety authority laying down science based standards so you can see the sps agreement based on scientific evidence so science based standards for food regulating their manufacture regulating their storage regulating their distribution regulating their sale and import for human consumption so this is a single authority to take care of anything relating to food or food safety and food safety authority the central food safety authority and state authorities work together to protect the food safety of the country if you look into the declared objectives of food safety authority you can see that main function of the food safety authority is formulation of regulations and guidelines and specifying appropriate system of enforcing various standards and the mechanisms and guidelines for accreditation and certification bodies engaged in certification and accreditation of food business because if you want to do a food business in india you require certification you require license and you require permission from the food safety authority and also it provides scientific advice to the government of india on food safety and it collect data on food consumption and also the risk assessment contamination of food and residues and also identification of emerging risk so all the mandate of the sps agreement is with the food safety authority and also it contribute to the international technical standard making in food sanitary and phytosanitary measures and also consumer education is also one of the mandate of the food safety authority and you can see that a component of the food safety authority the food safety compliance system is one of the important mandate through this particular system you can see the entire food licensing and registration system is made online by the authority so now the registration certificate as well as the licenses that are issued by the authority through this centralized system and also if they provide the technical support so this is an improvement and a very simplified transparent system of providing certification and license to the food business in the country and you can see around 22 regulations are handled by the food safety authority it is very interesting to see each and every area is covered for example food business registration safety and standards uh, licensing and registration which we talked about and food product standards and food additives and then a restriction of sales then contaminant toxin residues regulation laboratory sampling and analysis regulation and also health supplements special dietary uses medical purposes and functional food and novel food regulation 2016 then food recall procedure 2017 import regulation 2017 then also approval of non specific food and food ingredients 2017 then organic food regulation 2017 and you can find a, a set of around you know 22 regulations which includes alcoholic beverages and fortification of food food safety auditing 
and uh, notification of laboratories, advertising and claims, packaging regulation and then recovery and distribution of surplus food, safe food and balanced diet for children in school in 2020 regulation which comes along with the midday meal scheme. So, this is in furtherance of the midday, midday scheme of uh, the central government. Then you can see the food for infant nutrition rules 2020. Then again you can see the labeling and display regulations of 2020 and you can see for certain specific products like Ayurveda in 2022, food safety and standard. So, very importantly the vegan foods regulation 2022. So, the government of India, the government is also come out with the vegetarian food, the standards for the vegetarian food in 2022 and the last is with regard to the use of recyclable plastic or, or you can see that uh, uh, you know the, the plastic baggages. So, the food safety authority in India deals with the entire area of food safety whether it is uh, you know food packaging or it is labeling also they are dealing with labeling regulations. And also you can see that they prescribe standards for packaging materials. What kind of for example, the case of uh, the, you know the plastic packaging materials, they come out with new regulations in 2023. So, you cannot use certain pl plastic baggages with a specific uh, uh, thickness, specific you know they come out with a migration of limit they change the, the limit recyclable use of plastics and the packaging regulations are strictly implemented. So, now in India you can use only recycled plastics, recyclable plastics for wrapping of foods, packaging of foods and also the Indian standards of printing inks for use of food packages. What kind of printing? inks can be used in food packages and also regulations with regard to different food products. The same packaging cannot be used for uh, the, the same different food products. So, that is also mentioned under schedule 4 and then for example, this I have given an uh, example of a container, a, a food container what is the standard of a food container? It, it, it says that the container is you know rusty, all containers shall be securely packed and sealed. The exterior of cans shall be free from major dense rust, then perforation and seam distortions, free from leaks, enameled container that has become chipped and rusty copper brass container which is not with proper tins. Then containers made of aluminum not conforming in chemical composition to the particular standard IS 20 and 21 the other utensils aluminum. So, there is a standard for using aluminum wrappings or aluminum alloy utensils there is a standard for using it for food preparations. So, you can see a container, a, a packaging container, what is the standard of container uh, is given as an example. There is special standards for packaging of milk and milk products. So, you can see the packaging of milk and milk products, what is the standard prescribed by the food safety authority. So, it says that the bottling or filling of containers with heat treated milk, so pasteurized milk and milk product should be carried out mechanically and the sealing of the containers shall be carried out automatically. It means that no human intervention in between the bottling and packaging of milk. Then wrapping it is talking about bottling, next is talking about packaging may not be reused for dairy products. So, that means the dairy products containers should not be reused and also the sealing process for treated milks 
drinking milk, liquid milk or milk based products. So, it must be sealed immediately after filling by means of a mechanical device. So, that means you know, with human hands you cannot wrap it up, you cannot use any human intervention is permitted for milk and milk products. And also immediately after packaging the dairy products in the rooms provided for storage should be you know sealed and it must be uh, in, in, in refrigeration mode. So, there are special packaging requirement for milk and milk products. I have, I have given only very few examples. So, the new food safety packaging guidelines 2023 is you know the come out in 2023 this year only. They talked about specialized requirements for packaging materials. So, it is basically focus on plastic packaging materials and what is the standard of the plastic, recyclable plastic used for packaging and also a recommended list of packaging materials for individual specific products are included in the schedule. So, packaging and storing is an important issue. So, India also come out with a higher standard this year itself for packaging and storing of food materials and which is included in the schedule. So, slowly after enacting the law in 2006, so maybe you know uh, uh, is maybe after uh, you know many years, so around maybe 17 years. So, India is gradually increasing its standards. So, most of the rules which you can see in 2011, so it means that from 2006 there was a transition period for 5 years is given by the government of India, then they come out with regulations and now more than 10 years they are increasing the standard, the new uh, food safety packaging guidelines which talks about. And there are special guidelines for primary food packaging, basically usage of paper board, the paper for uh, uh, the food packaging and especially you can see that you know their shape, their thickness, composition and also you know which talks about there some sports or grease stains, cuts, pin holes and other flows, which specifically talks about the paper which can be used for boxes, cartons, plates, cups and paper lids and especially now you know the in, in large, large programs the paper cups and paper plates are used for the distribution of food. So, their quality is now the standard is mentioned. And the paper board materials specifically, the food safety standard authority come out with the primary food packaging uh, is standard in schedule 1. So, now as I told you, you require, you require the intervention of the food safety authority for starting any food business in the country. That is two ways and one is for small businesses where the annual turnover is less than 12 lakh rupees. And such registrations require only a certificate, they have to apply for only a certificate from the food safety authority. And above 12 lakh rupees, you have to apply for a license. And the process and procedure is also very simple. And the small, so this uh, two system is made in order to facilitate the, the, the beginners or the startups, the food business startups. That is why there is a uh, 12 lakh rupees, you know less than 12 lakh rupees in you know total income and above 12 lakh rupees. So, it is now the documentation is 
mostly reduced and transparency is kept and a centralized system and a very small fees is to get a certificate from the Food Safety Authority India to start a small business. And also at the same time, you can see that the, the India registration process, I said now either a certificate or a license is mandatory under the new rules to start a food business. So, even though it is a very small period of maximum of 30 days, 30 days time is given and if the food safety authority is not visiting you, visiting, making an inspection within 30 days, it is deemed to be granted and you can start your business. So, with the advent of technology, the food safety authority has made uh, its online process for the registration and it is the, the processes are very simple. Now, you can see the, the, the package food labeling. So, we were talking about packages, labeling is also very important. So, this, this includes the name of food, the list of ingredients, nutritional information, declarations with regard to veg or non-veg, declaration of uh, regarding food additives included, name and complete address of the manufacturer or packer, the quantity, net quantity, the license number, batch number, the date of manufacturing and the date of expiry or best before, the date has to be given then country of origin and also instructions for use. So, we can see this very clearly in a packet, the food labeling regulations. Now, it is mandatory. So, you can see the, the name, address of the manufacturer and you can see the net quantity, then the nutritional claims the nutritional claims which you can clearly see, the direction for storage or use which you can see and also the percentage of labeling. This is very important with regard to some of the uh, products like uh, uh, you know uh, cigarettes and also you have to mention about if any allergy, any food allergy information. Then food recall information, then an ingredient list, then the FSSA registration number or certificate, license number or registration number, certificate number to be given, date of expiration, country of origin. So, now the pre-packaged food is you can see that you it must have all these informations. So, misleading will lead to criminal prosecution and also you can see that mostly this objective is very clear, the nutritional information and also the, the food related diseases to be taken care of or the health problems to be taken care of by this particular product. So, the food labeling is focused on communication, especially communication to the customers. So, customer education is or, or the customer aware what is inside a packet. So, food label instructions are clear as per different regulations. So, India has again increased their standards on food labeling as well. And you can see that the labeling must include, so we already said that what are, what is to be included in a label. So, the, the, if there is a false claim, then definitely there will be a prosecution. List of ingredients, weight, nutritional facts, then Direction for cooking, for example, if you uh, take 
uh, a, a, a noodles packet, you can see the directions for cooking and also manufacturing dates, expiry date most importantly, storage conditions, what is the temperature it is to be kept and also what is its aroma. So, the its origin contact details even you can see the customer care number and also the email in the packets number days. Then allergy caution messages and even you can find the trademark of a particular brand and also you have to now mention veg or non veg by putting the red mark and the green mark and most importantly the food safety registration certificate number or the license number it is mandatory. So, all this we saw in a packet. So, again we, we talked about uh, the, the BAS is now the standard making body and the implementing authority is the food standards and safety authority of India. So, BAS which we already talked about about this mandatory uh, you know the mandatory certification and which mandatory certification includes food items as well. So, we can see that in conclusion India is complied with the SPS agreement as well as the TBT agreement through a set of legislations. So, I would say that India has implemented some of the provisions of SPS measures uh, and TBT measures much before uh, the completion of the Uruguay round of negotiations and it amended its provisions in accordance with the SPS and TBT agreement. But still as a developing country India faces problems in adopting international standards and formulating technical regulations. But slowly India is increasing its standards and even you can find now a, a, a sizable number of 109 mandatory standards and the people are more aware about the voluntary standards like you know the, the star whether it is 3 star or 5 star system and other uh, voluntary standards in other equipments. But ultimately I would say that India should adopt international standards to increase or to protect the consumers and Indian people uh, from uh, foods related hazards or it is uh, you know in order to protect the human health, animal health, plant health and at the same time the TBT part the stringent provisions to be imposed, TBT measures to be imposed. So, that we will be able to export our products to other countries all over the world. So, that the number of rejections can be reduced at the international market. It is not only a question of international market or exporting of product, it is related to the reputation of the country as an export destination. So, India requires international standards very soon. Thank you.